Okay, so today I wanted to show you everything that I picked up during the Sephora Spring Savings event. So I always film a wish list video and I always read through the comments on that video. And this past video, so many of you left rave reviews on a few of the products I mentioned. So that's kind of how I narrowed down my cart and chose a lot of these products. And then I did repurchase some of my go-to staples as well. I will film a video testing out the new launches, but I actually placed the second order because initially the Urban Decay foundation was not on my radar really at all. I don't tend to test out a ton of new foundations, but I feel like it's been getting rave reviews. And honestly, Urban Decay complexion products do tend to be some of my favorites. So I ordered it and I can't wait to try it out. I also ordered just a couple of new drugstore launches too. So once everything comes in, probably within like the next week, I'll do a video testing out all of the new products I purchased. But in today's video, I thought I would just chat about the products, why I bought them, maybe share some swatches and some initial thoughts. Okay, so I did purchase a new eyeshadow palette. I think the last palette I purchased from Sephora was the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude, which is like my all-time favorite palette. I feel like there was another. Oh, you know what? I purchased the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette during the holiday season. But other than that, I really didn't purchase very many palettes last year. So I decided to grab this one when it initially launched. I just wasn't super drawn to it, but I do feel like my makeup collection could use something like this. It is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3. So this is a fully matte palette. I do have Major Dimension 1 and Major Dimension 2, and those have like a row of shimmers on top and then a row of mattes and then two creams. I wear those a ton, especially Major Dimension 1. I feel like those mattes come in handy all the time, especially like the first three shades in that palette. And the reason why I was drawn to this one is because it's not overly warm or overly cool. A lot of the matte shadows in my collection do tend to lean very orangey, very red toned. And those just aren't the types of shadows I reach for a ton these days. So I'm especially excited to wear this bottom row of mattes. I think they're so gorgeous. I feel like you'll either love this palette and it will make sense for you depending on your makeup style or you'll think it's really boring. And I just feel like whenever I go to do my eyeshadow, it's something so simple like this. And a lot of my mattes just pull a little bit too intense. Like I don't know that I'll wear this shade a ton, but I feel like this bottom row and like these first four shades will definitely come in handy. And I actually do use the creams in the Patrick Ta palettes more than I thought I would. If I had to choose, I'd rather have like two additional powder or metallic shadows, but I think they are really good bases specifically for the metallic shadows in the palettes. So I don't know that I'll wear this palette on its own a ton. I feel like I'll probably pair it with a good shimmer all over the lid because that is my favorite way to do my eye makeup. But even still, as many eyeshadow palettes as I have, and the number has come down a lot over the years, I feel like I'm still missing just like a good safe formula that's quick to use, easy to blend out, and doesn't pull too orangey on the eyes or too gray toned. When I asked your thoughts about this palette in my wish list video, a ton of you said you love this palette. It's like your go-to staple. You don't regret it. So that's what finally convinced me. It is an expensive palette. And for a while I was like, do I really want to spend that much money on a matte palette? But again, I just feel like as I'm doing my eyeshadow these days, this one keeps popping into my mind. That being said, I have a $3 eyeshadow palette on my eyes today. The e.l.f. I Love You a Latte Quad is a really good staple matte quad. And then I have the Rare Beauty highlighter on top. But I am excited to try this out and see if it's worth the hype. Another product you convinced me to purchase is this one from Danessa Myricks. It is the Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. This sounds really interesting. It just sounds different than anything I have. The closest product that I can think of would be the Farsali... I always forget the name of it. They had like a, a powder serum that basically went on like a serum and then dried down to more of a matte finish and they discontinued it. So I was kind of hoping this would be a good alternative and my skin has been really oily this spring. When I placed my second order, I actually repurchased the Cali Ray Primer because that has been one of my go-tos. It does keep my skin matte, but it's also really smoothing. But so many of you said you love this product and it makes such a difference for you. So I'm just curious about the texture. It says, do not shake just tap the bottom. Okay, it basically just drips onto the hand and it does feel like a serum. It definitely reminds me of that Farsali product, but I'm just curious to know how it feels when it dries. And how do you use this? Do you use this as a primer or do you use it before your primer? I feel like you could probably use it both ways, but because it is such a lightweight product, it probably would pair well with other primers if you have like a lot of texture or large pores. So you could wear this in the areas where you get oily and then just go in with a small amount of another primer like the Cali Ray one on top. 
Wow. Okay. It definitely dries down and my skin has a very smooth matte feel. So it says wear alone or under makeup, press the bottom to dose a quarter size amount. I literally just put like two tiny drops on the back of my hand and I feel like that would be enough. Anyway, this could be a really good alternative. I'll definitely keep you posted. A ton of you said that you love the texture of this powder, the way it looks on your skin, the way it sets your makeup. It is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Matte Translucent Setting Powder. So I have tried the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Primer and that's really nice. It has, again, kind of like a similar texture to the Cali Ray Primer where it's very smoothing but also mattifying. So I do feel like this could be a great option if you have oily skin. I like the black sleek packaging, although I'm sure that will get powder all over it before long. And then when you open it up, there is like a little cap that you can twist. Oh, and then it actually, oh, it locks into place, which is so nice. I feel like I'm kind of particular about loose powder packaging because if I do travel, which I'm really not planning on doing any travel anytime soon, it just gets so messy and it ends up spilling everywhere and then you open it up and there's powder everywhere. The other packaging I really like is the Patrick Ta One Size Powder, but that one's really big and bulky, so when I travel, I don't usually bring that with me. Anyway, I'm excited to try this one out. I love trying new powders so, so much. With Summer right around the corner, I might film an updated video on all of my favorite powders. It's been years since I've done one, and I feel like I went through a period just recently where my skin was combo, leaning slightly dry, and because of that, I feel like now I can recommend powders for all skin types, so I might film that video soon. A couple of new launches. I did decide to pick up the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch what are they officially calling this? Oh, Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blush. So I actually grabbed two shades, which I normally wouldn't do. Usually I would just buy one to see if I like the formula, but I just, I have a feeling I'm going to love this formula. Like this is my dream type of powder blush. And I love the Rare Beauty highlighters. I wear them almost every single time I do my makeup, either on the eyes or the cheeks. And I think this formula is going to be very, very similar, just with like a blush toned color. So the shade Cheer is what they describe as Selena's perfect shade. It looks kind of vibrant in the pan, but I have watched some videos on these and I think you can use like a fluffier brush to get more of a diffused, like soft application. I feel like they're getting somewhat mixed reviews, especially for people who have like a lot of texture on their skin like me, but I've always been such a fan of glowy blushes. The Bare Minerals glowy blushes are some of my favorites. I don't know, there's just something about like a, a gorgeous glow on the cheeks that I love. So this shade is Hope and this one is Cheer. Honestly, they don't look that different in the pan. I thought they were going to be quite a bit different. I wanna swatch these because I can't wait. Okay, wow. They are definitely softer than I thought they were going to be, which I am excited about because I do prefer like a very soft sheer wash of color. I keep mixing up the shades. Okay, so this one is Cheer and then this one is Hope. Cheer is definitely like a little bit icier on the hand, which I do like. In the pan, I was kind of like, ooh, that's very, very bright. And then Hope, I feel like is obviously a little bit deeper, really pretty. So those are just like light, soft swatches. I feel like these could definitely be pulled off as highlighters. And if you don't love like a super glowy blush, these definitely won't be for you, but I do love that look. I'm curious to know if this is the same formula as the highlighter, just again in blush tones. All of my highlighters have shattered, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. I feel like this is a very breakable formula, not the most ideal for travel, and weirdly enough, I haven't actually broken any of mine traveling. It's just been like as I've been doing my makeup. If I like set them down a little bit too hard or like another product bumps into it, if I have them in a tray, like as I'm getting ready to film, they've all broken. I still have all of them because even though they're broken, they still work fine. But just something to note if you order these online, mine didn't arrive broken because Sephora usually does an okay job packaging the products. But if I was ordering these from Ulta, that might've been another story. Another new release I picked up is the Say Slip Tint Radiant All Over Concealer. I went with the shade four. You know what? I feel like this was kind of an impulse purchase to be honest with you. I don't even know if I talked about this in my wishlist video. I don't think I did because I do think I added it on last minute. Again, after just hearing some really good reviews about it. And I probably don't need another concealer to be honest with you, but I just, I feel like people have been loving this. I do have the other Say Concealer. I think it's called... Ooh, this is so yellow. I think it's called their Glow Beam. It sounds really dumb, but I swear I like agonize over which color to choose when I'm purchasing online. I don't know if Say is sold at the Sephora Inside Kohl's, but I don't have an actual Sephora store near me. So sometimes like when I'm trying to choose if the brand isn't sold in stores, I will just like compare swatches online. I even use the Sephora tool to like match your shade. 
And I don't know, I never get like the perfect shade. I think this will be fine once I blend it out. It's definitely a little bit thicker than I thought it was going to be. It feels really moisturizing. I think I thought it was going to be like a light to medium coverage, really intense glowy concealer but I feel like I'm going to like this. Like it looks really smooth on the skin. I can already tell I'm going to like this concealer better than their other concealer. Their other concealer is great. It looks very pretty. It definitely gives your skin like that radiant glowy effect, but on oily skin, it doesn't last quite as well as I would like it to. So I did repurchase two of my favorite concealers that I just ran out of. I've actually been out of this one for a little while, the Natasha Denona High Glam. I have the shade N4, which is like my most perfect shade match in any product I own. So when I'm using that Sephora tool that you can like plug in the shades you wear for recommendations in another complexion product, I always go with this one. Here's Natasha Denona, here's Say. But interestingly enough, like I always thought this one felt really moisturizing on the skin, but look at the glow of the Say concealer compared to this one. This one almost looks more matte compared to Say, which I think is really interesting. When I talk about the Natasha Denona concealer on my channel, a lot of you who have dry skin say it's a little bit too dry for you. So I'm curious, if you have dry skin and you've tried the Say concealer, what do you think of that one? This really is my favorite. It looks so good on the skin, really smooth, amazing coverage stays in place so well. And like I said, I ran out of this a little while ago, so I've actually been using the last of my Tower 28 concealer. This is their Swipe Serum Concealer. I have the shade 4 DTLA. Let me swatch this next to the Say Concealer. The Tower 28 Concealer is definitely thinner than Natasha Denona, and it also feels more hydrating on the skin. Like, it definitely has that typical serum-like texture to it. So here's the Tower 28 Concealer in DTLA, and then here's the Say Concealer in 4. So the Say Concealer is obviously more yellow toned, which is interesting because I thought this was a little bit more yellow on my skin. So this one is very, very yellow, just for reference in case we have similar skin tones. But they do have a very similar finish. Again, I feel like Tower 28, I don't know. Initially, I was going to say it feels a little bit thinner on the skin, but I don't know. I feel like they're pretty close. So I'm curious to wear these side by side and see how they compare. But I'll definitely test this out on camera and share my thoughts on it. But I think I'm going to like it more than I even initially thought I would because of the texture of it. I did repurchase the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I actually got two of these because I do go through this mascara pretty quickly. But you know what? I opened this today because I completely ran out of mine and I applied it to my lashes and it felt like the tube was already dried out. And I've been talking about this in a few of my recent videos. I feel like the first time I tried it, the formula was really wet and it didn't dry out too, too quickly. And then like as I've been trying it over the years, it feels like every tube I use dries out a little bit faster. And this time, it feels like the tube is dried out before I even really started using it. So I'm curious to know if you've had that experience. Some of you have told me that you feel like the formula has changed and I still love the way it applies and it looks on the lashes. But as I was using it, I'm like, I feel like this has been open for two months already. It's a little bit more affordable compared to other high-end mascaras, but it's still a high-end mascara. So I don't want it to last for like two weeks before it completely dries out. So I don't know if you had that experience too. I'm kind of tempted to open the other one to see if it's the same case. But again, once it's opened, like it dries out so fast. So I don't know. I don't, it's my favorite. So I feel like, not that I'm stuck. Like there are other formulas I love, but it's just kind of frustrating. I also repurchased the Glossier Boy Brow. I feel like I'm scraping like, every little last bit out of it. And I just, I ran out of all of my go-tos at the same time. The thing about this product is it is such a wet formula when you first try it, and this takes forever to dry out. So I almost like it a little bit once I've used it for like a month or two. And when I'm initially using it, I just have to like scrape off most of the product but I love this brow gel so much. I go back and forth between this one and the next one, and I've been on a Glossier kick for like the last few months. It just looks so good. I love the tiny applicator. It gives like a very realistic look to the brows, and I went in and filled them in with brow pen, but if I just want more of a natural look, I'll just use this and then take a brow pen on like the very front of my brows, and it looks really, really pretty. I did purchase a new shade of the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. I'm actually wearing it today in the color George. I have it on top of a ColourPop lip liner in the shade Oh Snap. This is my favorite lip gloss formula of all time. And this shade Maple Sugar is a newer launch. So, oh no, mine looks like it was opened. It kind of looks like it was used, or maybe it just kind of opened in transit and leaked all over the place. But I was curious to try this shade because it's a really pretty, just like chocolatey 
brown. But the reason why I love these is because they look so, like, look how glossy that is. They're so shiny, so smoothing on the lips. And online, this looks really, really pigmented, but I just, I knew it was going to be a little bit more sheer because their glosses normally are. So I can't wait to wear that. I feel like this lip with like this type of eye look is my favorite look. The last product I picked up is this little duo from Ami Cole. It's the only like value set I decided to go with. It is the Flush Hour Cheek and Lip Duo. So this comes with a full-size lip treatment oil in the shade Bliss, and then also a full-size Desert Date Cream Multi-Stick in the shade Hibiscus. Okay, so within the box, they actually come in their regular packaging as well. I've actually been wearing the Ami Cole Gloss in... What shade is it? It's like the the brown toned one. It kind of looks similar to this, but it's a little bit more pigmented a ton. It looks so beautiful, so juicy, so glossy. Again, I love this formula because it is so shiny. Normally, I'm not a big fan of pink on the lips, but I feel like I have been enjoying it lately. So this is probably the most subtle out of, it is the most subtle out of the three I own. I also own the hot pink one, which is pretty vibrant, but I feel like this will be perfect for every day. And again, you can see how glossy and shiny it is. It has a little bit of stickiness to it, but I like that because it actually stays in place really well. And then I've been wanting to try this product for a while. It's their blush stick, or you can use it on the lips too. This color is really pretty. And I feel like maybe this under the lip gloss would be really nice too. Okay, so it is a pigmented blush. Amico Light is a black owned beauty brand. And I've loved everything I've tried. Wow, this is so smooth. So a little bit is going to go a long way for me personally, but wow, that blends out so nicely. Like it doesn't blend out to a sheer finish. It has such a gorgeous creamy feel to it, but it's not overly dewy, which I can definitely appreciate. I love like a good dewy cream product, but sometimes those just don't last as well on oily skin. So I feel like this will stay in place so well. And again, I feel like that on the lips under the gloss would actually be so pretty, especially for spring. So that's everything I picked up this time around. Like I said, once that Urban Decay foundation comes in and then a couple of new drugstore products I ordered, I'll film a video testing everything out on camera. I'm actually doing a drugstore video next. The products are sitting right in front of me. I'm going to be sharing reviews on 15 new drugstore products I've been trying. So stay tuned for that. It should be up in a few days and I will see you very soon with a new one. Bye.